Sometimes medical breakthroughs can also bring up nagging ethical questions, such as who has access to the data? And how much do we want to know if the news about our future is bad? These kinds of quandaries weigh on the minds of the staff at the Center for Practical Bioethics in Kansas City, formerly known as the Midwest Bioethics Center. They also tackle aging and end-of-life issues, as well as disparities in health care. Myra Christopher has led the organization since its launch in 1984, at least until recently, when a rare form of ovarian cancer forced her to step down as the center's CEO. Myra talks now with Nick Haynes. Doesn't it seem hard to believe that it's been 30 years? I remember um, I was uh, in Westport visiting you in what seemed to be almost like a broom cupboard of an office. And now, though, you have uh, had a step back as the leader of the Center for Practical Bioethics. Was that difficult to do? No, it was not. I knew um, that I had done all I knew how to do and that the center deserved new leadership. That to move the center to scale, as the marketing people say now, or to properly position it, that I was not the person to take it to the next level. You were diagnosed with ovarian cancer and you were facing those very issues yourself, the very issues that you were telling other people, uh, how to navigate the healthcare system, how to face pain, right. how to face death head on. Right. How are you then, Myra, as a patient, facing those issues yourself? Well, um, the cancer that I have, and I don't say this to be moribund or whatever, but my cancer is not curable. So I have been in remission now for some months, and it's my intention, my hope, that I will stay in remission. But I was not able to make decisions as I would have hoped to. Uh, I mean, you know that I would want to choose the surgeon very carefully, who I would allow to put his or her hands inside my body. In Cancer Today magazine, oh, which ran Lord. in December, <laughs> yes. uh, you said in that, I would never go to a doctor who won't give me their cell phone number. I won't. And no one should. That's a practical piece of advice from your time as an ethicist. Well, you know, we will allow them to cut open our bodies, stick their hands inside, you know, feel of our organs. We will strip naked, we will turn ourselves wrong side out, and we do that willingly because we have so much trust and confidence in the profession. But why in the world would I allow anyone to touch me in a way that I won't, wouldn't even consider allowing my husband of 187,000 years to touch me if I didn't know their full name and their cell phone and something about them. I mean, it just seems obvious to me. In that Cancer Today article, you talk about the, the constriction of wearing a wig <laughs> during that period of time, which many cancer this survivors my, have gone through, of course. <laughs> um, you know, the metal taste in the mouth from the chemotherapy, the pain that you, you go through. You, on this deal that we are not doing enough for, as, in terms of pain management in the United States. And yet, I just saw an article just recently at CNN online about a person dying every 19 minutes in America because of accidental overdoses of pain medication. That number is often pitched around. Uh, it comes from CDC. I, I will say I, I'm hesitant to challenge CDC, but there are big questions about that number. There are a hundred million Americans who live with chronic pain. And about a third of those live with debilitating serious chronic pain. So about 30 million people. And people will, will retort back, well, but that's not a life-threatening condition. Well, actually it is, because it's not just that people lose their jobs and they lose their insurance and they lose their families, they even lose notion of who they are. The average chronic pain patient sees seven to eight physicians before they get any relief over a period of about four years. Is that because it's though too complicated to treat? Uh, takes I think too much time. There are a lot time? of reasons. There's no litmus test, you know, other than this one to ten. There is no, and, and nobody believes what you report anyway. But there is no litmus test for it. Now there's a lot of pressure now that we'll do MRIs and then, you know, we'll really know if people really have pain or if they're just malingerers or fakers or, you know, weaklings. Um, but interestingly, 
We could both put our hands on this table and allow someone to smash our hand with a hammer, and your MRI might light up and mine might, might not light up at all. And we're going to ask actually our floor manager to come over here with a hammer, uh, Myra, and, and, smash and our we're going hands. to actually try that at the end perfect, of the interview. Perfect. <laughs> uh, you've been at the center almost now 30 years. Almost. When you think about all of the things that the center has been involved in, everything from the advances and the challenges of medical technology, the disparities in healthcare, the aging and dying issues, the pain management, is there a ethical challenge, a case that stands in your mind over all of those years that has been the sort of highlight for you in that period of time? Well, I've, I've actually thought about writing a book about the 10 or 12 cases that uh, I think about when I go to bed at night. There is not one. I think the center has played a role in raising issues in a way that people had to respond. Sort of been a Jiminy Cricket, you know, kind of, hey, is this really what we ought to be doing here? Even if we can do this, aren't we to do it? But when we look at the state of health care in this country today, which I think is abysmal. I think it's abysmal for everybody involved, for the doctors, nurses, administrators, patients, their families. Um, you know, I'm not ready to crow about any great accomplishments. Maybe it's not as bad as it would have been if we hadn't been asking the questions. Well, I appreciate you sharing those thoughts with us, and uh, hopefully we can uh cheat our way out of not having our hands smashed by a hammer I, I would hope that on too. this table I would hope that on the too. local show. Myra Christopher, thanks for being with us. I'm happy to be with you, Nick, anytime.